Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow Fury 333 bringing you another cast. I'm gonna be doing more than one game for once, and hopefully, it should work all three of them. Well, I know one of them is a video, so that'll work fine. The other two are replays, which will be shown quite quickly. The first one's going to be a fairly quick match on Imperium. And all these replays I got from gamereplays.org. Really great site, and if you play games, post your replays up there so that people can watch them and maybe you'll get on the show. So, anyway, this first game on Imperium, it is. Double check who it is between. And. Oh, right. Here's some music on the subject. So, yeah, it is between Shaka and Kevin. Shaka is in the top right corner playing Grekum. Kevin is in the bottom left corner, also playing Grekum. So both players are playing... I'm not 100% sure exactly how this was being planned out for either their strategies, but we'll find out quite shortly. So, Shalka is actually going quite quickly ahead of Kevin. He, As he normally does, he's only building his Octos. He hasn't actually set them to RPs yet. He probably will be setting them to RPs ultimately, but he hasn't done that yet. Kevin, on the other hand, going back to the present and just double-checking, making sure he's got his build set up. His Octos are set for RPs, going in between the resources, actually. So instead of having... Yeah, instead of having it being in front of the boxes, you're having it in between the boxes, but multiple RPs between them too. I've never seen a player do this before. It should be interesting. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work out, but I imagine it won't work out any largely different than anything else. It's not that big of a difference, except when it comes to being able to switch a little bit more quickly. That'd be the only difference. However, Kevin needs to reorder these octaves to actually do this, because there we are. Resources, he just barely didn't have them, but he got them immediately after trying to build. So that... Won't be a big issue. Shotgun in the other hand, we're seeing what he was doing at the 125 mark. He, however, is about 30 seconds ahead of this at the 210 mark, building up Progen set and getting enough, probably for harassment. He has quite a few RPs, but he might be getting more RPs from this as well. However, he is setting up a Seppi, getting that out, and then, yes, he is. There, there's the Reef, and his Octos are set up to build more Seppis, and there they go. So, a Seppi is being built right now. And the reef as well is being morphed in. So. Strange. Okay, apparently some people are having a hard time seeing this. Uh, I'm just gonna double check the bit rates. Well, the bit rate looks okay, not, not great. But. Anyway. Shalka is getting up his advanced structures very quickly. This is at the 3 o'clock mark, or 3 minute mark, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 3 o'clock mark. We've had a long game, long several hours in the last two minutes. Time compression. No, three minutes. Three minute mark, he's getting advanced structures, so 325 marks is going to be done. And Kevin, on the other hand, he's still about, he's still at the present, he's about a minute behind now. Jumping back to when he is, he is building up, he's just getting some Seppi Faro, probably using them to build up just the Reef and Advanced Structures and Nardicus, but he is not getting, he's not fast forwarding a whole lot, he's doing a lot of pausing, very concerned about making sure everything's just perfect, which may not be the best idea because, of course, when you actually do all that pausing, you're falling behind and behind and behind. So it's going to be a bit hard to actually get anything done properly. And if you're on the SC channel, let me know how it's looking in terms of lag or frame rate, because my bitrate is not apparently spitting out as quickly as I would expect it to be, and that's actually starting to bug me. But let me know if it's if it's looking good or if it's looking bad. I want to find out now rather than later. But it should be good. So more options coming in for Kevin. So Kevin's really okay. He's over investing in his main base. This is way too much. This is way too much by half. He should be splitting these octos up, getting them into the naturals, getting the expansions over here, over here. I mean, either expansion would be fine, but building this many RPs in the main base, yeah, it's a little safe at first. But once these resources, I mean, these boxes, okay, they're not doing too badly right now. But once they get drained, they're done. Fast. He, the shop is saying some far pods of the future. Probably should check that too. He is saying some far pods closer to the future. Actually, moving near the unplayable pass, completely undoing his whole setup. Moving a Seppi and a Faro to proxy triad. Oh my goodness. So, just double checking the observer. Looks like he has. He did originally set up this spire, sending up some far pods, sending him into Kevin's base. But Shaka looks to be completely echoing this out right now. And it's a bit hard to tell because the blue time wave isn't quite up to date. But Shaka, however, jumping back to his echo at 615 mark, going back to 145 mark to check up on what his actual strategy is going to be. So completely changing from Kevin entirely. Kevin is back at the 347 mark. He is apparently focused on getting more stuff up. He is getting a Faro, getting a Faro to build a Spire, getting more units from there. He has gone back to prepare, but of course, once he realizes what's going on, this blue time of actually does change things as well. 
in the main base, completely changing. Shaka started moving out when the blue time wave was coming along, but not finished. Shaka, however, is at the 2.30 mark. Setting up a Sepi and a Faro. Sepi and Faro are being built for generation. There is very few RPs. Very few RPs in his base, but six RPs on LC, one on QP. And Octopods and a bunch of Octos coming up to be built to be attacking with. That green time wave is going to be the kicker for Kevin. Kevin, however, has been actually playing against this quite a bit. I was looking up the replay descriptions. This is the third game that they played. Shaka apparently did not do this just once, so Kevin is apparently prepared for it. However, Kevin is also about a minute ahead from where Shaka is, and Shaka has got everything set up when he's at the 314 mark. So this is at the 419 mark that Kevin's actually focused and getting his defenses set up. This is going to be very difficult for Kevin to deal with, but I think he might be able to pull it off. Shalka is not fast forwarding, Kevin is. Kevin will be able to at least get some production set up before he has to worry too much. But this is about the time that the attack is going to happen, except it hasn't happened for him yet. So Kevin is not up to date as to when the attack is happening. Shalka, on the other hand, is just about to be up to date. And it looks like he is going to be... He's going to have to deal with this. And Kevin will be seeing it very shortly on his timeline. He won't be seeing it very shortly, however, on his main screen, though. And so the timeline, we see the red time wave... Or the red, not the timer, the red information bar. That means that he's getting damage and he doesn't see it yet. But Kevin is actually going back and sees it. Jumping back further, trying to figure out what to do about this. And it looks like he's going to be setting up some more. Well, Sepi Far, this is all the stuff he normally did. What he really needs to do, or somehow do, is to stop these Octos from building, turning into RPs. He needs that defense. Right now, the Octos are still coming in. This is at the 349 mark, the attack coming in. For the second time we're seeing it. And Kevin is trying to pause, figure out how to micro his forces. He doesn't have much current energy. He has no current energy left. Very little. He can't really issue any orders. He can issue orders one at a time. He's losing his tribe. He's deep pro into everything to try to defend against this. But it doesn't even be working out too well. However, I'm saying that mostly because while the Octos are dying, this Octopods are still doing a ton of damage. Shout from this point of view at the 436 mark has managed to get through the triad. So Kevin back at the 4.5 to try to deal with this. Getting rid of the Octos, but these Octopods are the ones that are going to be really killer. Not to mention a reef coming up and more Oct head here, so continuously producing more and more Octos. So Shock is going to be in a great position. Kevin is doing what he can to try to deal with this, but he's not going to be able to do enough unless he actually gets Chronoport. I mean, really, I don't know what he could do other than try to get Chronoport in the last little sliver of time and deal with that, but I don't think he can do that. What he can't is how we're trying to do is just cleverly move around, get... Oh, nice idea. Getting a Seppi to distract the Octopods while getting the others out. However, the Faro has gone away. The Faro is the most important thing to get away. That Seppi would have been really nice to have, but the Faro is going to be able to build an Arcticus. From there, he'll be able to build up more and more units, rebuild his base. Not the best idea, but then Shalka is going for a proxy setup on Kevin's base, so Kevin might actually be able to get out of this just fine. Plenty of resources, however. He has tons of LC and QP. So that's not a problem. He just needs to build that Arcticus. And then from that Arcticus build up, his basically build up the entire base again. His Arcticus as well is also escaping, so Shalka hasn't managed to actually catch the stuff that's going to be able to rebuild Kevin's base. So Kevin might actually be able to spring back from this. However, I highly doubt it because Shalka is in a much better position, has much more control. His own Arcticus is set up such that you could be able to see, well, maybe a little bit coming in. But the main point is that Kevin is going to have a really hard time building up when Shalka has this much map control. And this far actually isn't building anything yet, but we're not looking at Kevin's point of view. Here we are. From Kevin's point of view, the Arcticus is being built. Both players also have advanced structures. No other tech has been researched at this point in time, and neither player is really focusing on any time in the future. So, Shalka is trying to deal with all the RPs, getting rid of them. Some of them are escaping, about half a dozen are escaping, but for the most part, it's not going to work out very well. Shalka is actually unable And Kevin is focused a lot more on just making sure that he has everything as much as he can escaping, but Shalka has set up some domes, he set up what he can to stop the escape, and he actually has a dome set up kind of cruelly right next to this Arcticus. So the Arcticus will die after one Octo gets produced from it, and Seppi has been produced from the North Arcticus, so Kevin will be able to rebuild from that Seppi and Octo. Shalka does not know where they, well he probably can figure out where they are. He doesn't see where they are however, he just would know. So two Octos are being set up, he hasn't, Shalka is not actually attacking with them yet, Kevin is going to be able to get a bit of free reign in his own territory, or his top left base, so kind of between territory, but still, going to have a chance to get out of this. So Shalka focused very heavily on just dealing with everything that's escaping, and getting Sepipods as well. Sepipod, good idea, very fast unit, will be able to scout around the map, figure out what's going on. This is not a big map, which is the big reason I'm thinking Kevin is going to have a hard time getting out of this. This is a small map, and 
The thing is, this map, because of that size, is going to be very problematic when it comes to any sort of tricky strategies, because your opponent can just run around the map with a bunch of units and end up seeing everything that's going on. However, the Sepi Pod is more concerned about getting rid of this RP. Not really a big deal. Kevin has tons of resources in reserve. And as you can see, a lot of units managed to get in the future. Getting far pods, well, not really in the future. It's 817 mark. It's about 15 seconds ahead of Shaka, but still, relative future. Shaka, however, does know what's going on. And Kevin does is able to hold off the auto coming in, but that's not the point. The point is that Shaka now knows what is going on. He will be able to send all the units he wants. And actually jumping back about 20 seconds, the 812 mark, we see that the Sepipod and two Octopods are going straight to the north to deal with this base, and this will be a problem. And also Farpod's coming as well, so Shaka is going to be able to deal with this as soon as he has the chance. However, the Farpod is ready for Kevin, and it could be attacking anytime. Kevin, of course, is focused a bit further in the future. The 905 marks 30 seconds ahead. He has jumped back to keep an eye on what's going on, seeing that the RPs are being attacked, that he didn't see that before. And now he's closing the Farpod and sending it out to attack. The Farpod will be able to attack, but not for very long. That type pod will see it and will destroy it. It'll get rid of the Octo, though, and that's some good news. However, the Sepipod is the problem. Faro's trying to get take care of it, and they will be able to take care of the Sepipod no problem. But the problem is, of course, the Farpod is going to be destroyed, and that's going to be the end of it. So, this Farpod is really only Kevin's only hope. He's got to get it out of the way. He's got to stop it from attacking that Sepipod, because that Sepipod is going to be completely massacring it. And it is getting out of the way, so Kevin has escaped with that Farpod. But more Farpods, Sepipods, Octopods coming in from Shaka. Shaka is just harassing this completely, just trying to get rid of what he can. Actually, trying to get rid of everything else that he can. He's trying to make sure he can get rid of the entire base. Doesn't want anything to exist for Kevin because Kevin, of course, is his opponent, and this the way this game works is that you have to destroy everything your opponent owns. And Kevin, for his own part, is doing a lot to keep himself alive. His reef is in the bottom right corner, but not really doing too much. The Farpod is getting rid of some of Shaka's RPs, but once again, not a huge deal. And Shaka actually jumping to the present future. He's I was curious if he's actually researching anything like Chrono Board, but no, he's just he's queuing up his production in the future so that he has no. Issues and GG's! So that's, like I said, it's a short game. Kevin has GG'd, and that was nicely done by Shaka. So, that is game one of tonight's set of games. So, the second game, I'm just gonna double check what's going on. So, make sure that the game is not gonna be interfering. Sorry, they're having some issues I've noticed with the way replays work, and I think I can fix it. If I restart the game in between cat in between replays, or not so much fix it but avoid it, I think the second game loaded ends up messing up. Anyways, not a big deal. The point is, I'm gonna have to do some restarting, but shouldn't be too long. Just enjoy this nice music while I wait for the game to restart again. Which is actually taking an abnormally long time. Oh, you know what? No, okay, nothing on there. Sorry about that. Anyway, double checking that the Acron process was not actually on XSplit's set of process or set of processes to pull video from. This is very strange. Normally, stuff like this doesn't really happen. I don't know why Acron is taking forever to load, or rather, to be prepared to launch. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now it's Sorry about the delay. So anyway, we'll be moving on shortly to the second game of tonight's set of casts. The second game is going to be on All of Stone Pass, and it is going to be between some people are not quite sure who it is between, but it is between some other people. We'll find out shortly. It is going to be, let's see, start of the game, and let's get this going. And, oh, seriously? Okay, so apparently we still are still having lag issues. I do not know what the hell is going on with my stupid internet connection. I am, on an, I am on a wire. I am not on wireless. This is a wired connection. I do not know what is going on with my upload rate. Something really, really stupid is happening, either with the upload rate or with XSplit or something. I don't know what it is, but it's really starting to piss me off because I need to get this pushed at 600 kilobits per second, and it's only pushing at 300. I do not know why this is. <sighs> I just almost wanted to stop, honestly. Like, is it still a continuously bad frame rate? Because if it is, I'm just going to stop. 
Like, I'll do the video, but I'm not gonna bother with the gas. I don't know what, what the hell's going on here. Like, can someone on the RC channel please let me know? Because, like, right now, if not sooner, because I'm... I'm seriously considering just stopping the replay and just going straight to the movie. Because the video cast that I can do, it probably shouldn't lag too much, but I don't want to have laggy cast. If I have laggy cast, there's no point having it. I'm wasting my time. Like, someone tell me, now. Like, how bad is this frame rate issue? Because I see the bitrate is there, like, I'm not kidding. Tell me now. Elliot and I see you're active. Tell me now. Like, what's the frame rate like? Do you see the mouse cursor fluidly moving across the screen? Was everything bad in the last game? Like, what? AI versus AI? Why in the world would I cast AI versus AI? No, I, I don't care about that. I care about what, how this looks. I need to know how this looks before I continue. I don't know if the, IS the ISP shouldn't be doing anything. <sighs> okay, whatever. I'm assured that it's watchable. A damn little better be, because I'm getting sick of having to toss casts because of this upload rate issue. Anyhow, that aside, let's move on. So this game is going to be between Rar the Flying Toaster and Dolmont. Okay, Dolmont and Rar the Flying Toaster. Dolmont is going to be playing. I uh, see so in the bottom right corner, and Rod the Flying Toaster is not yet chosen his race. But he will be playing Vekir. And they're both trying to go for their perfect start, their perfect economy start, so getting Zyne Veer and the Marines to start building up RPs as quickly as possible. And Okay, well, apparently it works. Oh yeah, right, it's a seven second delay. I suppose I shouldn't have been quite so facetious or quite so angry about this stuff. Uh yeah. Anyhow, Dolmont is getting his economy, getting actually six RPs. This is kind of unusual. Most CISO players nowadays have been going for four RPs and one importer. Very fast, slightly aggressive build, but... Oh, okay, it was fine? Well, oh, alright then. I... I... Wish I could edit up that stuff easily in the middle. I can't. Sorry. But... Yeah. Anyhow... Do oh wow, Dolmont's okay. He's going for 10 RPs. He is just going mad, and all of Stone Pass has come up before. It's a map where it's a very, sh very small map. This is a tiny little map, and it's going to be has center expansions, has two center expansions that are fairly well stocked. The same as the main three, three QP, five LC, five LC, two QP in the naturals, and there's little expansions that bought top left, and oh, sorry. Go with the cardinal directions. The northeast and southwest that are 3LC, 2QP. Anyhow, Rod the Flying Toaster is going to be scouted out pretty quickly. And now Dolmont knows he's playing Beckier. And actually, Rar is going for very, very fast foundations. And he's about 30 seconds behind Dolmont. So Rar is actually going pretty... Okay. It is... Oh, phew. All right. Back to the game. Dolmont is going for quite heavy factory now. He's... I'm not sure exactly how effective it's going to be, because most players would punish this, but I don't know if Rod the Flying Toaster is totally aware of what's going on. He's really focused on getting foundations himself, and I think Dolmont will be able to get away with his super fast economy build, and also four import five importers now. So he's going for a very fast economy and production build. I think at this point, six or seven factories, or four or five factories, and two or three macro fabs is the way to go. Six importers, yes, no, never mind. Eight total of factories and macrofabs is strictly necessary at this point in order to possibly pump out all the units he needs. Or armories get them included as well if you want for more infantry. Tank tank infantry would be really cool in 1020 because they changed the way that tank loading works. And interestingly, Rather Flying Toasters also went for a lot of infantry. This is something you never see Grekum or sorry, Vekir do. You never see Grekum do this either, because of course Grekum can't produce fear class units. But you never see Vekir do this and they can produce fear class units, so that's completely different. And now he's getting a depot set up to try to make sure his design gears out of the way. Very late depot, however, this is extremely strange. And now destroying the depot. Uh, it must that must have been a misclick because I can't imagine he actually intended to destroy that depot. So anyhow, that's beside the point. Dolmont's actually jumped back about three, two minutes and 18 seconds mark from the 450 mark river at four, so that's about three minutes down. And retreating a special ops away, double checking the natural, make sure there's nothing there, figure out what's going on when it happens, and. 
Rod the Flying Toaster has become aware of this as well. Not really caring too much though, just more worried about making sure he has his base set up, getting his aerial control center as well as his as his depot, and yeah, he barely damaged the depot. So anyway, both players really going for very fast expansions, and all is a good map for this. I just have never seen players go for it quite this aggressively. So Dolmont back when he is getting another macrofab, like I said, he really needs more and more factories and macrofabs. Like probably, like I said, five or six factories, two or three macrofabs. With this many importers, more RPs would be necessary, yes, but the importers are usually the big bottleneck and those aren't really going to be a big deal. Four reserves doesn't seem like a lot, but that means four units at a time. And of course six importers is going to be more like six units every importer cycle, that's quite a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. Anyhow, regardless, Design Gear is being destroyed, and Rod the Flying Toaster doesn't seem to really care. He knows it happened, although, from his point of view, he did manage to build all of his RPs. In reality, once this Red Time Wave comes, it's... or the latest reality, rather. When the Red Time Wave comes, it's going to be totally different. Zion Pulsars as well are being built. This is at 7, 658 mark. These are really late units, mind you. Like I said, really late depot. Very strange setup, and probably the only reason Dolmont actually got away with building this many importers and production structures. Oh, okay. RPs and importers, not really production structures. And now, Zion Veer trying to build up what RPs it can, and Dolmont is huge on resources right now. Even back when he is, he's going to probably just invest this all. And that's going to make him get just jump miles ahead of Rara the Flying Toaster. And like I said, it's really weird that Rara did not set up as much as he could have before. And we're at the 517 mark, jumping back to the 424 mark. Rara the Flying Toaster is actually... No, this is when he attacks his depot. No real purpose, but he is noticing that he lost some RPs. Trying to double check what he's doing and what's going on, making sure he has everything set up because he knows that the special op is there. Now moving his infantry down to support his Zion Veer. So he has all of his infantry coming down to beat that special ops. Jumping up to the 612 mark, just double check what's going on. Getting ATHC's attack. So ATHC's coming in, trying to kill the Shin Veer. The Shin Veer is actually doing a very good job staying alive, but it won't last very one more shot and it will be dead. Jumping forward to the 612 mark, actually, well, jumping around, he's kind of jumping back to when he was. But jumping back to the 430 mark, he wants to double check to make sure he can get rid of the special ops. Actually not going for it. Trying to really figure out, I guess, how to save that special ops. Now he's going for what I was expecting. The big attack. Actually going for a proper attack on this special ops right here. To deal with it once and for all. Before the Zion Veer comes in to actually build the RPs. That should be enough. That should do it. So Dolmont will actually be able to take his natural. But this has been... Sorry. Dolmont will get out of this natural. Rod the Flying Toaster will be able to take it. But Dolmont, on the other hand, has... It's at the 624 mark. Building up what he can for tech and... Which is a lot. He built up every, he, everything he can, really, for tech. Still not building a lot of, actually a bit surprising, lack of RPs. He does have a lot of reserves being used, and he has, you know, it's actually not too bad in terms of how much he's building. Just double check from the observer's point of view. He has, at the present, actually, he has a lot of reserves, but he doesn't have a lot of QPLC. Maybe more armories. Okay, I admit, I might have been a bit hasty about the factories thing. But with the amount of RPs he has, he could probably start supporting it. Another armory and factory are being built in the northeast near the present. He has actually already taken care of this. However, where he is focused at the 430 mark, this is when his ATHC harassment is being sent in, and the Special Ops has actually run away. So, Rod the Flying Toaster will have that expansion, but he will be fighting through nothing to get to it. And the Shinbeer has got to take it out of the way to actually make sure he builds what he needs to build. No, actually, never mind. That's not the problem at all. The problem is the lack of LC. So now Rod the Flying Toaster is at a fair disadvantage, and this is going to be a problem because, of course, if he runs out of the resources he needs, he's already built quite a bit. As you can see, his production along the timeline has gone quite involved. So if he runs out of those resources, he's going to end up running out of anything he can produce. He hasn't produced any tech as far as I'm aware. Double checking in the present. No, he has not. However, Dolmont does have ground units and he has machinery, meaning he can build pretty much any unit that CISO can field, except carriers, but you wouldn't build them on a map like this anyway. Or at least you rarely would. So if he wants, he could have heavy tanks, he could have twin Mars, he could have just really powerful infantry and mechs. Back when they are about a minute and a half down, which is where Dolmont is focused at the 628 mark. We see that he is getting rid of this expansion, getting more ATHCs to try to block off from Rod of the Flying Toaster's base. Rod of the Flying Toaster, on the other hand, about a minute down from that, the 548 mark, is going to be building... He's re -cha He's changed around how his depots are built up. Two depots, both connected to an aerial control center and an annex. Really efficient way of doing this, but the problem, of course, is that with two depots, you're kind of wasting a bit of money in advance. And Dolmont 
I'm sorry, Barrage of the Flying Toaster does not have a huge amount of money. So, this is going to be a bit of an issue. Two Shin Beers coming in, no one attacking those. This is really strange. I think Barrage of the Flying Toaster was focused somewhere else because he was not focused on that Zion Pulsar. He must have been focused on building more vehicles, but he was not focused on that Zion Pulsar, that's for sure. Because he could have gotten rid of those ATHCs no problem, and he did not. So I imagine right now he will be able to get rid of those ATHCs, he will be going for them, and the ATHCs are just going around trying to, like I said, block off the access to the natural expansion. Dolmont, about a minute up from here at the 733 mark. He has not seen that battle catch up to him yet, but of course it's being undone anyway, so he doesn't really care. And he is just rolling in it. He's got... He's got specials now. Okay, this is going to be the big thing. He has specials, he has heavy tanks, he has nanite infection. He can now control any of Flying Toaster's units that he wants. And that's going to be a huge problem for Flying Toaster. I, really, Flying Toaster is in a major jam right now. I don't see him getting out of it easily. But he might be able to get out of it nonetheless. Getting his Zion Toaster's in, and he really should be closing them right now, but he isn't. Probably when he's focused, he has, but he isn't right now. And actually, not even when he's focused. He's just passing by this battle, so I'm surprised he hasn't cloaked them yet. Trying to get rid of the ATHC. He's gotten rid of two so far, but he's lost two of his Zion class units as well, and two of his Zion Veers, so he is losing forces very rapidly, and Dolmont has a luxury. He can just throw them away. Really, he does not have to worry about his forces getting killed, because he doesn't have a major resource bottleneck right now. He has half the map under his control. He has quite... Well, okay, three factories... An ar two armories of Macrofab. Not great, needs more RPs to really push it. He has too many, really, he has too many importers. For what he has in RPs, he has too many importers, but that's not really super important. What's important is that he actually gets attack rate going in. Flying Toaster, trying to do what he can, however, he has barely any, cube, any CE left, any Chrono Energy, while Dolmont is barely using his Chrono Energy. Shin Church is coming in to try to detect the ATHCs and get rid of them. However, game destroyed. Shin Beer will still be able to detect, but the Mar will take care of it in no time. So R Flying Toaster is having a very difficult time trying to deal with everything that's going on right now. Another Shin Church coming up. Getting rid of one of the ATHCs. The other ATHC will destroy it before it's able to die. Actually, let me check. 45, 1. No, the ATHC will actually die first. Flying Toaster jumping back just to double check what's going on and manage the battle a bit better. But it looks like Dolmont has actually moved up one of the ATHCs. And trying to get rid of these Shin Beers, and yes, he will. The Shin Turcher will be going down probably a bit faster, but I think, the, yeah, the HTC will actually have dealt less damage to the Shin Turcher at 175, not doing too badly for itself. The Mar won't be able to kill it, so that Shin Turcher actually survived out of this slightly. Getting more infantry, but he really needs to just get vehicles directly. I don't know why he's getting so much infantry. I mean, it does front load the LC cost, but he doesn't have to worry about that. And timing is also not a huge problem, so it looks like getting skip teleport on the Shin Turchers. Will be able to start harassing a bit more, but really, that's still going to be very difficult. Dolmont, on the other hand, about 40 seconds up, or 20 seconds. Flying Toasters right now. He is setting up, he has four heavy tanks and tons of tanks. Half dozen mechs, no, a dozen mechs easily. And he is setting out his heavy tanks. Looks like he's probably going to go to try to capture some units because he easily can. 100 energy per, and Nana, in fact, only costs 50. That's, that's eight units right there. So I think he's going to try to take control of Flying Toaster's entire base, though, frankly, other than units, there's not much point. Anyhow, Flying Toaster has, from his time, started getting attacked, and it looks like... No, he isn't. Strange. Oh, no, that was the Observer. My mistake. He... No, he's attacking. He... There we are. There's the Shin Turchers. Shin Turchers doing harassment, teleporting in, and getting rid of the Importers. And here's the problem, is that the Importers are pretty weak, and they're now the bottleneck for everything that's going on. So Dolmont is losing his Importers, and they have a lot of reserves each. So, he's going to be losing everything coming in here. Needs to get rid of what he can. The Shinturgers will, of course, be teleporting in, and that will be a problem. But he will be able to deal with that. That it is, the Dolmont will be able to deal with Flying Toaster's attack. He is retro-preparing for it, and that should be enough. Getting the heavy tanks back here will be enough to deal with it. Or even just the tanks, to be honest. The tanks are good anti-air units. Well, good generalist units. So, that will be fine. Oh, mechs, of course. I forgot about mechs. Mechs are great anti-air units. That's definitely what Dolmont needs to do. So, Dolmont will be able to deal with this. And we have the Shin Church here. They're, they're skipping in. And now, one of them's gotten destroyed by a mech. The Shin Beer actually taking quite a bit of damage before dying. Of course, mechs are anti-air, not anti-ground. And the other Shin Church coming in and really getting attacked. None of the mechs have gone back to actually try to kill it yet. They probably will shortly, but they haven't done it yet. And one of the importers is dead. Another importer will be going down shortly. And looks like... No, it looks like Dolmont has actually jumped back a bit further. And we'll be able to take care of the Shin Church, no problem. So, these Shin Churchers 
Actually, he's trying to double-check around. 1025 mark is when the Shinturders came in. Double-checking this battle, making sure it works out. Sorry, this is Flying Toaster's point of view, I don't call once. Flying Toaster is trying to deal with this battle as best he can. And teleporting his Shinturter away in the middle of the map, though. That's great recon. That's excellent scouting information. He knows that there are heavy tanks coming in and likely nanite infecting him as soon as they can. And it looks like... They haven't started nanite infecting it yet, but they will be nanite infecting as soon as they can, I'm sure. Attacking the aerial control center directly, getting rid of the sh and one of the Shinturchers is down, another Shinturcher is gonna be going down shortly. One of the heavy tanks has gone down, another, the other heavy tanks are doing fairly well for themselves, actually. But the Shinturchers are not doing well for themselves, not one bit, all of them have gone down. The Shin Beer going down very quickly in the ACC following. RP is going to center of the map for Flying Toaster, sharing space with Dolmont. Dolmont is Going back, well, actually, excuse me. Flying Toaster's going back to just double check the battle, see if he can do anything more. However, he does not have anything to do with it. And Dolmont has Gay Tech now. So, Dolmont, not only. He has four. Oh, yes. This is going to be cool. Dolmont. This is about the same time. And he's going to be able to just Corona Port rapid fire wherever he wants, whenever he wants. I mean, it's a bit excessive, but I think he's probably trying to use him for TSS. I'm going to be honest. You only really need two at most to do rapid fire Corona Porting in any practical capacity. But four, that's eight Temporal Solution Shields. That's going to be pretty kick-ass if it works out, because that's going to mean invulnerability. I've never seen TSS use serious. I think I've seen it once in a cast, ever. So this is going to be pretty exciting. I've never seen this. Anyway, regardless, Dolmont is actually really low on Chrono Energy. He has, as we can see, enough for maybe zero, five orders total if it was full. And he's trying to control quite a few units at once, so... This is going to be a problem for him. Running away with his heavy tanks, just getting them out of the way because they're not going to last long at all. One of his heavy tanks just died. The other heavy tank, not doing too badly, but the Shin Churcher managed to get out of it. Flying Toaster, at his point of view, is not actually researching any tech. I'm a bit surprised no tech has been researched for him. He managed to save his base. I'm just going to double check that battle as the Observer. And it looks like the battle was actually decided by the Shin Churcher. One of the Shin Churchers pulling back a little bit. One of the Shin Churchers pulled back. And none of them got around, but it looks like... Are they being... No, one of the... The heavy tank did nanite infect, so one of the heavy tanks is nanite infecting. And regardless, it looks like Dolmont didn't actually take advantage of this to get rid of what was going on. So the nanite infection is not doing too much for Dolmont. Regardless, the Shin Turger is going to be going down. This is, of course, a review of the battle in the unplayable past. Oh, I see. That's what happened. Another Shin Turger came... More Shin Turgers came in to deal with this... And that's how the battle ended. So anyway, more Shinturchers were built, and now Zion Churchers and Teth Pulsers are being built as well to help deal with this entire force. That being said, Dolmont still is a massive force. The heavy tanks alone are going to be enough to deal with this greatly, but even without heavy tanks. And just double checking, none of them seem to have used their energy yet, so... And this one's actually very close to death, halfway to death. But these guys are going to be invulnerable. Here we are. Here's the Temporal Solution Shield I was looking for. However, Flying Toaster is changing around his attack patterns. That's going to make a huge difference. Flying Toaster has actually changed his attack to just go for these RPs. So the center of the map, Flying Toaster has taken the center of the map, but his own natural is being infested, or has been infested by Dolmont's forces, which means that he won't have much of an easy time getting through. He is attacking the bottom, the northeast expansion, but the bottom right, or from the bottom, a bunch of TSS, Twin Mars, and Heavy Tanks coming in. Going to be obliterating this shortly. Shin Pulsers are the only thing that Vekir has that can break TSS that is mobile offhand that I remember. And none of those are in Flying Toaster's possession at the moment. So these Heavy Tanks and Twin Mar will be able to assault his bases unabated. However, Flying Toaster is trying to do what he can. Valiant effort on the Northeast expansion, but it's really not going to do much good. Unfortunately, losing everything he has, he does not have enough to just lose that base. Dolmont can lose his base. Dolmont has more than enough. He has... All this production structures are TSS. Like, these chronoporters just used up all their TSS energy. Jumping back about two minutes. Yeah, they used up their TSS energy, as you can see. 100 per. This one actually could TSS again right now, but 100 per. And these guys, they're just going for it. Jumping back to the 1527 mark, we were a bit up from there before. About the 16, 1630 mark, roughly, before that jump there. This is when the units of Flying Toaster started attacking. And, like I said, still these... Units in the main. I'm a bit surprised that Dolmont has not attacked with him yet, but not super surprised. Surprised by the fact that he hasn't chronoported at all. Admittedly, TSS does preclude chronoportation, but still, at least these units here can't TSS everyone. Why not just chronoport them back and do some uppercuts or support his own units? But anyway, regardless, TSS is just really powerful on its own, and Flying Toaster not building up any Shin Pulsers 
No, he's still going with Design Turchers. He's not built up any Shin Pulsers, and I don't know if he realizes he needs to build Shin Puls Pulsers in order to get out of this situation. But yeah, the Corona Porters have not been used. Dolmont jumping, just fast forwarding towards the future, but not using the Corona Porters, and able to deal a ton of damage. However, the Corona Porters are getting directly assaulted. Heavy Cruiser coming in, and all aerospace. All tech has been researched for Dolmont. Dolmont can do anything he likes. A nuke is probably going to be coming up pretty shortly. No, it isn't, actually. There's no nuke in the Heavy Cruiser yet. Which is rather unusual. I would expect a nuke in there by now, but I guess not. Anyhow, TSS, on the other hand, is the new nuke. And that's going to be doing a very fine job of base destruction. Just mass destruction, really. Don't ask me how, but it destroys mass. Anyhow. When it comes to destroying bases, though, this is going to be the force to use. Everything TSS, everything Invincible, is going to be a very fast, very destructive game. And here's the nuke! That's what I was looking for. Nuke being dropped eventually. And I'd imagine it being dropped fairly shortly. And it looks like both players are synced up at this point in time, and Flying Toaster does not have any chance at all. I, I'm a bit surprised he didn't build any Shin Turchers and... No, that's just... I'm not sure exactly what the symbol means at the bottom there. But that is going to be it. It looks like Flying Toaster has GG'd. Or pretty close to GG'd. And, yeah, Shin Pulsar would have been really nice in that right now. You never use them, though. That's the only time you really need to use them. Shin Pulsars are okay units, but when you have Shin Beers, you might as well get Shin Turchers, because they're close detectors and bombers. Very powerful that way. But, Shin Pulsars. Quick, cheap, generalist unit. And here's the nuke! There we go. Actually, that really did anything. Huh. Well, anyway... Yep, yeah, so that is GG. Flying Toaster has lost, Dolmont has won, getting all that tech, and that was a really interesting game because the only reason that really worked is because both players went for a conic. So if either player went, especially as Dolmont's even pointed out, the Shin Pulsar there, if the Flying Toaster had gone for a quicker attack, he would have been able to punish Dolmont for his fast economy. But because Dolmont was able to get away with it, he managed to pull that whole thing off. So, very interesting game. Very neat showcase of what you can do if you can get away with an economy build. And that was the game. So, both players have GG'd. That is done, and we will be moving on to the next game, which is just a video. And that video will be between myself and Kevin. It's going to be an FP VOD, basically. Or I think it was Kevin. No, sorry, it was Sunstrider. Kevin was a different game. Myself and Sunstrider on Void Platform, and it's a CISO Mirror. So I think that's going to work pretty well. So just starting out now, we have on well, the bottom top right corner is me. I'm not sure, of course, where my opponent is at this point in the game, so I am going to refer to myself in the first person since this is an FP bot, a first person video. This will be. Quite quick. Oh, so numbers pointing out Void Platform is a rather interesting map. I made it, oh, I think it was the third or fourth map I made. This was back, way back in Alpha. And I made it with one of the really, really fast texture sets. One of the almost detail free texture sets, however, but it was a really fast set that wasn't really used. I thought it looked interesting, but also kind of strange. And I decided, you know what, why don't I make something that looks kind of like a space platform, except somewhere where something just kind of broke? Admittedly, my original thought was that the universe broke, but now that I think about it, it could just be like a capital ship exploded next to this space block. The resources just flew out. I mean, LCQP crates are canonically inside. That's how they go. So anyway, now I'm demonstrating what I mentioned last game, when I was talking about how the way that CISO RPs work, or CISO building works, RPs to importers, is, or four RPs, one importer is very popular to start. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, apparently low FPS near the end. Very strange. I'll have to look into that. I don't know, my bitrate is still not ideal. I don't know if it's just that XSplit is not pushing as much as it can because it's just not bothering to, or if I'm doing something else. I will be looking through, double-checking, and... This game isn't live. This, this game is a video. Anyway, this game is a video. This is not actually happening live. So, anyway, getting up... Just setting up my RPs, making sure I have everything set up, actually realizing I'm going a bit too far on, so I better build some RPs a bit earlier in the past. 152 mark, and getting a second importer and a factory, getting up, planning on building a couple more factories fairly soon, because, of course, I have the importers to do it, and also the resources to do it. 
on this map is very easy. Getting QP, however, I'm running low on QP, and I'm going to run low on QP especially because I just built an ATHC, and that's going to be useful for harassment, but I don't know exactly where my opponent is set up. And it looks like he is not in the top right, so he must be in the bottom. And so once that green time wave comes, we'll see my special ops at the bottom actually dealing some damage, and then I'll figure out what race he is, or more specifically, what he's doing. I can hear out what race he is. He's probably CISO. Well, I already know he's CISO, but I know from having played the game. At this point in time, I only knew either CISO or Vecchier. Wasn't entirely sure about which one, and now I will find out that it is in fact CISO. And here we are, the attack has just hit, and we see the damage coming in. Not very long, however, that special ops does not last. But it gives me enough information to know what's going on. Building more QPRPs as well, and now I see... Yeah, very fast. It is CISO. Definitely fighting against CISO, not a Vecchier match, so CISO Mirror. And I was just trying to experiment with CISO. My main is Vecchier, but I was trying to play around with them because I kind of felt like, I want to see how their teleportation and chronoportation works. I've never really played around with that. So, let's see if I actually get to that, of course. But that was kind of my intention. And here we are, two more factories coming up, and this will be a lot more useful for my resources and getting more RPs as well. Just trying to expand around the map. CISO is really good at this, because cheap marines and the fact that you start out with two makes it really easy to expand across the map. And getting another importer as well, so three importers with three factories, that will be enough easily. Probably a little bit more than enough, actually, in terms of importers. Just making sure this ATHC just avoids getting attacked too much while harassing as best it can, and that will be quite useful for just keeping my opponent on his toes. And I'm going to try to build a macro on the bottom. I don't know if I have the resources. I don't think I do. It looks like I probably don't, but I'm going to try anyway. Possibly the resources will come in. And just double check, we have... Else, okay, and getting Lancers up, yeah, that's actually going to be a problem for the Macrofab. Anyhow, that Macrofab aside, it's not a big deal. I don't need it that early. I do, need, however, need to get some more forces in. Like I said, Lancers are a great idea. Just setting them up to Rally Point right next to the, my opponent's base, and from there I should be able to build up attack with. And now I'm just getting attacked. I'm getting attacked fairly early on. I think my HHC is just getting more attack. Not really too worried about that. Sunstrider's doing a few attacks in the past. I'm not too concerned about them because, frankly, they're probably harassment. I have fairly decent defense. Oh, ATHC coming in. Okay, just don't check that I have the ATHC. Send the special off out and it's not cloaked. Okay, ATHC is not cloaked, but the special off should still go out because if it does cloak, I'm guessing Sunstrider will actually get less of this and cloak the ATHC. Jump in the past and change around this battle, so I better move that special ops out there so it can actually scout it. But it looks like that special ops is not really needed. That ATHC will likely be going down. However, this is still in the future, so Sunstrider has plenty of time to fix up that battle. And another ATHC coming in from the east side of my base, not doing too much, and my expansion, my little expansion in the north is actually completely unharassed. I guess Sunstrider is not aware of it. And my mech just died! Okay, that, that I can't, that cannot stand. That mech has got to move out of the way. So, just get to get that out of the way of the ATHCs. That should avoid... Okay, good. Getting it out of the way of the ATHCs, and now... No, I'm not building the Macrofab. Not quite yet. But it is out of the way of the ATHCs. It will not die. That's the important part. Just getting these Lancers in as well. Try to get some harassment going on there. Well, the ATHCs are coming in. One of my Lancers... I want to... Getting it to defend. Trying to help out, but it won't be doing too much. Two ATHCs and a Lancer... Yeah, not going to help much. The Special Ops over, taking most of the fire, and a Mech... Coming in to defend this Lancer, this is not going to go very well. i got to go back and fix this up, because this is not going to work out very well. However, I think I can just get away with running around and not worrying too much, just harassing. Really, it's not a big deal. I'm more focused on harassment than I am on actual real damage. Just trying to keep him on his toes and keep his RPs closed. Right now, though, I have a fairly good defense. My Tornauts, I got early machinery because I wanted early Tornauts, because I noticed ATHC's coming in a lot. And now it's going to bug me. I also should get some RPs on QP as well because I need to get more QP, and that pass attack, no, apparently not really a huge concern. This ATHC attack, however, is going to be getting rid of one of my Lancers, and the Tornado coming in to help save it, but it's not going to come in quickly enough. I need that Lance. I really could use that Lance. I don't necessarily need it, but I'd like to have it. So, I'm going to probably go back and change that. Not 100% sure, but I think it's probably a good idea, because Lancers are decently expensive, and I don't want to lose them if I don't have to. But I can deal with it later when I get to the unplayable past. For now, just gonna be, more, gonna be more focused on getting this comm center into the middle of the map. My RPs are all set up, and now I should probably focus on saving this Lancer. So the Lancer is still getting heavily attacked. Making sure that this is set up, the RPs are set up, and 
Yeah, this Lancer is going to be dealing a fair amount of damage, actually going to be dealt a lot of damage because the ATHC is finally cloaked. That's what I was expecting for a while. And Tornod will have to come in here. This Lancer is going to get out of the way. And come on, Lancer, get out of the way, get out of the way. And I better go back and save it again because that did not work. So let's try this again. Get this Lancer out. No, okay, a bit too late. No, okay, okay, where was it? Oh, the Lancer's still being produced. Oh, so right out of the factory it started attacking. Well, that's kind of a pain. I will have to save it right now. Yes, get out of the way. Get out of the way. No, don't attack yet. Don't attack till the other Lancer comes in. Which is coming in from the south and will be arriving shortly. There we go. Okay, now the other Lancer is here and you may attack. Oh wait, no, this actually won't work. Crap. Okay, that special off just died. This won't work at all. Get you guys out of the way. Get them out of the way. Come on, come on. Don't waste my chrono energy. Oh, oh shit, one of them died. Okay. <sighs> no, it didn't. It ran away. Okay, Lancers have successfully escaped and helping out with the harassment with the other Lancer, but the mech got rid of that one. So that's not going to work too well. Going to change this Lancer's attack vector entirely. Get from the northeast side, or the west side, rather. And it looks like the ATCs are still dealing with the damage they dealt before. I should just get these front, these Lancers out of the way right away. Get out of the way. No, no, don't cross each other. Okay, that's not going to work. You, no, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to do this again. Well, good thing I've got time travel, because otherwise I'd be screwed. Anyway, back done. So, getting this Lancer out of the way directly. Both of you guys just run away. Run away. There you go. Okay, now you're out of the way, and now I need you to hierarchy because I just realized I'm out of chrono energy. I'm really low. This is one order. Okay, this is going to be tough. I think I can order him to him, order one Lancer to the other Lancer, and then the Lancer to the Tornado. There we go. Okay, so now I have what I need to get rid of these ATHCs. Tornado's I own, but I want this. Cool. So Lancer's coming in, helping out. This should finish up. Okay, finally. Still really close to the unplayable pass, and I am not too confident about my position right now. And apparently, what happened to my RPs? Okay. No, you, you, ah, where are you going? I forgot to undo. Okay, undoing now. Now you go build RPs. Because I need you to build RPs. I cannot live without resources. That's the whole point. You have resources, you win. You don't have resources, you lose. Well, roughly speaking. And more production, but still. If I get this macro up too. Get it a bit earlier. Near the inflatable pass. 7, 12 mark. Focusing on getting that up there and getting more units, just trying to macro up as much as I can. It's really hard when you have this low chrono energy, although my resources aren't great either, which is why I'm getting more RPs to get more units, to get more RPs, or get more map control and then use that to get more RPs. This tank, you go here. Make sure he's not doing any shenanigans, because I don't know, he might be doing shenanigans. Hey, you should go for it. So it looks like there's going to be a bit of a problem. More, actually no, more, no real problem here. More RPs in that expansion, that third little base there that's not being used by anyone yet. Used by me now. Mine now, you aren't taking it. So, more tanks. Need more tanks. Need more ground-based units because good variety. It's good to have variety. I want to just go for straight frigates, and that's not going to go over well. And should probably either build... No, I'm going to build a turret. I don't really want another macro fab at this point. Can't really afford it. Getting an... Getting it, and then sending it forward... And it looks like that Tornado's really in a bad spot. I mean, like I said, deal with the ATC, no problem. But the Blackbird, the Blackbird's was making it a problem. Gonna get rid of that Blackbird. First thing I... Oh, okay. I'm, maybe I shouldn't. I, you know, it's actually losing a lot of forces right now. I lost almost all my army right now. Just rid, oh, there's an MFB on top. Oh, no. Wonder. And yeah, no wonder's a problem. Okay, the is gonna be a problem, but I think I can get rid of that too. I should probably just change how I'm gonna do this. Getting more Tornados, getting Mars. I need to get a buff army in order to actually deal with this crap because I do not have a whole lot of actual units, and I don't have a great position. Void Platform is really great for getting a defended position. It's horrible for getting any real attacks going, so, and this is where I'm running into problems, but I mean, it's a good thing. That's how I designed the map. It's supposed to be kind of defensible like that, but the main base, there isn't a lot of resources, so you will have to run out of your main base at some point. It's just attacking. It can be a bit difficult, so I don't really have the best units I need to siege with, and this tank is going to try to deal with the best I can. Get this Tornado out of the way. This Tornado, just run away with all the units you have in your control. Wait until the MFB comes. No, no, run away, run away, run away. Okay, now Blackbird's in a better position, but I think the Tornado's still going to die, and if it does, I'm going to lose Hierarchy, and... Oh, shoot, I think it just died. Yes, it did. Okay, so I've lost... I've got to redo all the hierarchy stuff. All the factories were rally pointed to that Tornado, and I do not have the chrono energy to fix that up in a hurry. So I'm going to need to do that after a little while. For now, however, I can just set up these Tornados and set up this MFB. Get the MFB out of the way. Get out of the way. No, 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 no. Don't die. Don't die. And I don't know what he's doing right now because I'm not focusing. I'm more focused on these Lancers. Getting them hierarchied up. 
to help out with the attack, and also, now I need you to build a comp center in the center of the map. And, okay, there we go, actually building it properly now. And my max fab, more units from there, Frigate and Martank, get to that Lancer, and attack here, and it looks like the MFE is going to be useful. Okay, the MFE actually did some good. This tank, however, is going to need to also do some good, because the Tornado will not be able to take care of it, and the Blackbird's gone! Okay, the Blackbird is down, the MFE is my opponent's MFE, Sunstrider's MFE is going to be going down too. Gonna jump back though and double check that I have everything set up a bit better. Get this tank out of the way, but in a good position so it can fight that Blackbird once it. MFE's in a bad position too. Oh my, this is gonna be very tough. As you can see, very little, like 93 health in the MFE and 63 on the tank. That's gonna be pretty bad. And the Lancers as well. Actually, the Lancers only 125 health to begin with, so that's not gonna be great. But regardless, it is still gonna be some damage, so that's gonna be more attacks coming in, and that's gonna be a lot of damage coming in for me. And here, oh, that was actually kind of a waste. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. That was stupid. So I guess that comm hub, that comp center, I mean, is going to be there nonetheless. That was a waste of chrono energy. And why did I waste that? That was stuff. But, we get this tank in. If we get this tank in, I will be able to get rid of all this forces. And I think I'll be able to get to it pretty quickly. And gate tech. I need gate tech. I have specials. I think it might be a waste of money. But gate tech, however, won't be. I'm sure of it. That is what I've, like I said before, I want to play it. Didn't Lance just kill my marine? This Lancer just killed my marine! Oh, oh, that bastard. Okay, that Lancer, that Lancer's going down. Like, that will not stand. Because that Lancer, that Lancer's pissing me off. Need to get more armories, though. My armory right now is building... No, well, it's building up, but it, it's getting gay tech, so that's not going to help me much. But another armory, I need that. Another couple armories, get more marines, get more stuff. I've got a lot of LC anyway, so I could easily spend it all. But... Get my marines, get my stops, get my factory up, and get more mechs as well. One of my mechs is building the armory. A bit more expensive. But now here we are, building teleporters. And you, you there, build build a chrono porter. Here we are, yes. Get a chrono porter. So we have chrono porter and teleporters. Finally getting my gate tech to pay off. And more units being built, more tornados being built. I'm really liking the tornados. And armories getting built up too, getting marines from there. Well, I want to build a comm center. I want to get that. Actually, I guess the Lancer will survive. Oh well. I, I still stand by it. That aggression will not stand. I just have to take care of it a different way. Possibly by chronoporting. Anyway, let's get these tornadoes in here and actually deal with this and... And Cruiser, hey, you come here too. And attach there. Well, anyway. You guys chronoport back and then attack the main base. Up from the side. So, go! And you... Are you going as well? Yes, we're going. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'm going to go back and follow them. Well, let's just double check that they actually get to the destination. It shouldn't be too obvious. Playable pass, and I have plenty of battle I could watch. I don't really want to make sh make it obvious I'm doing anything. And, okay, it looks like they're about to start striking, so I should get out of the way. Okay. Once the green time wave comes, it'll carry it over, but that's fine. I don't really care about that so much. At this point, the battle is going to be pretty safe. My teleporters are set up at the 1358 mark, and here come the... Tr and it looks like... Oh, okay, the turnouts are still going in. Good. Alright, just double checking what's going on. And I, Wait a sec. 190 QP. Oh, shoot. I overbuilt. I think I don't have enough money for this Corona port. Okay, that's bad. I should probably go back and change this around. But first, I'm going to make sure that my Corona port needs to deal. And get these RPs. No, these RPs are fine. Get this guy to build a Corona porter, though. Or this guy here. So, two Corona porters, just to make sure I have backup, just in case my opponent realizes, oh, hey, here's this Corona porter. Blows it up. The other one's still there. And tanks coming in as well. I think that was a mistake. Not sure though. No, it's not. I actually did undo that. So here are the tele the chronoported chronods coming in to deal damage, and they will be dealing quite a bit of damage. And here we are. Actually, my opponent did have shenanigans. He did expand out towards the center of his base and the unoccupied base. So yeah, basically the same thing I did, but I'm not sure how well. And oh crap, these chronods are flying around where I don't want them to go. Why are they flying around there? Okay, this is going to be a little... I don't know why these guys are going out. I gave you the Corona Porter. Ow, shit. Okay. <sighs> Try this again. Priority, priority, and that's four. Well, that's good enough. One Tornod probably shouldn't make a huge difference. Will be a bit weaker, but I should be able to survive nonetheless. Anyway. Oh, right, because that Special Ops happened to be linked in. I don't know what happened there. Must have been a misclick on my part. Mechs in the center getting up my stuff, and... Oh, crap. I'm out of resources in my main base. I should have pay closer attention to that. And my opponent has Gate Tech, he has a teleporter, that's also something to worry about. Because that means he might have a Corona Porter at some point, and at any point in time, really, that's when I'm worried. If he has a Corona Porter at any time in the timeline, I can still 
deal some uppercut damage, and it will be a lot harder for him to deal with it. That being said, I still am a bit concerned. I really am. I don't understand how I'm going to be able to get out of this easily. Teleporting away, just getting his mechs up here should I deal some extra damage. Is an area and you know, why are you coming you back? Oh, okay. Harakid did something over in the main base. Oh, Harakid to this tank and Mar are also going to be teleported over quite shortly, or... Maybe just corner, no, I'll just teleport them away. So teleport it over, and that will be able to help take care of the main base. And a defense turret trying to come up, but it won't be able to be built before anything is actually damaged dealt, because that's going to die. So, that defense turret did nothing. That was a waste of money on Sunstrider's part. Sunstrider is in the future. Yeah, he's going to be doing some corner porting. That's the corner port sign going straight to the future and not doing anything else, because that's one of the easiest ways to actually do corner porting. He's not jumping towards the future to do any real damage. So just going to get this Tornod back here and actually... Chronoport properly. There we go, Chronoport back, and... Okay, that was a mistake. I think he might have noticed that I Chronoported back. be a problem! So, if he notices that, I'm gonna be in a world of trouble. If he doesn't notice that, it should be fine. If he doesn't notice, it should not be a problem. But I really don't know, because that was... That was further in the unplayable past, and that's a pretty good tip-off. And, wow, okay, he's Chronoported back. Some mechs and MFBs, not sure what else, but he has Chronoported back quite a few units. This is still playable pass, so we can still command him as best he wants. I don't know if I can actually deal with that directly. Though I have lost a lot of my RP production. Oh, you know what? Hey, here you are. RP's in the center. You, build RP's in the center. Because otherwise, build RP's earlier in the center, because otherwise it's going to be a problem for me later on. And it looks like he's very close. Okay, Sunstrider is right next to the unplayable pass. That is going to be a small problem. Only a small one. Not a big one. Just double checking the unplayable pass myself, make sure nothing's going on. And it looks like... I have more units to send back. I will have more units to send back, and I will send them back, because that's what I do. Well, first I'll hierarchy them up, and then I'll send them back, because I have barely any Chrono Energy left. And come on, you guys. Chrono Ports, and then teleport, I guess. And go! And wait, what are you saw? Oh, shoot, I queued, I queued that. I queued that Chrono Port, didn't I? Okay, well, the tank went, but he's not going to be doing too much. Let's see if I can redo this. No, 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 you... You both need to chrono. Shoot, okay, well I guess that's gonna be- I have to abandon that, that's right next to the unplayable pass. I have no chrono energy. I have no CE, I cannot deal with this. Going to the LC, and in main base, actually taking a lot of damage from the north. He didn't defend that very well, he has- his south side still the defense turrets probably, but the north side had no defenses, strangely enough. And it looks like that Tornado didn't do anything. So, you go back and actually do something this time. Because I want some extra support there. So that Tornado should be more useful once it gets in there. And currently in the unplayable pass, so I think the blue timer will be carrying it along. And getting more RPs as well, because the RPs I need. I have a lot of LC, I have very little QP, and I'm running a QP sync right now with the Chrono Boy. You know what? Temporal Solution Shield is something I should, should have thought of, but when I think about it now, the turrets would be a problem, because the turrets are going to be breaking the Temporal Solution Shield easily. So maybe it wasn't that big of a deal, but still, would have been kind of nice to have. Nice to use, I saw there. 